class. All right, today we're going to talk about John Adams, his presidency, the one maybe-ish good thing he did, and all of his problems. So, are you ready? So, when George Washington left, he gave some advice. He said, do not make political parties. The problem is, we didn't listen to him. And we had two parties develop. We had the Federalists, and we had the Democratic Republicans. The leader of the Federalist Party was actually Alexander Hamilton, but he couldn't run for president because, as you know, you've got three requirements to become a president, and he hadn't hit one of them. Uh, he was not naturally born in the United States. He was actually born on an island called Nevis, so he was not able to run for president. But the second leader in his party, John Adams, was, and they already knew he was well-respected because he had been vice president two times under Washington, so he ran for president. Um, the problem is how it worked with the Electoral College back then is second place actually became vice president. So the second place winner wasn't in his party. It was actually in the Democratic Republican Party, and that was Thomas Jefferson. Well, that's a little awkward. Today, that would be like Hillary Clinton becoming president and Donald Trump being her vice president. Can you imagine? Now, Adams is going to have a lot of problems with his presidency, but there's one good thing he did. He actually made our Navy. So his nickname is the father of the Navy. Um, we hadn't had one. Even in the Revolutionary War, you know, we had John Paul Jones. So that was about it. Um, but Washington never developed the Navy. And so John Adams is the one that finally says, I think we're going to need this thing. Now, it's good that Adams made this Navy because we're going to need it soon for the French. See, the French were a little upset that we made Jay's Treaty with England, their biggest enemy. So they decided to start stealing our ships. And to solve this, we sent some negotiators over. The problem was they wouldn't let us meet with their foreign minister. See, the foreign minister is kind of like our secretary of state. He's the one that you talk to when it deals with foreign affairs. Instead, he made us meet with three people. And we didn't want to tell the public what their names really were. So we gave them nicknames. We called them X, Y, and Z. And the whole fiasco that followed was called the XYZ Affair. This is where these men actually asked us for a bribe. So before we could even consider making a treaty, they wanted us just to pay them money. Just because. We're not fans of that. So, instead of paying the bribe, what we decided to do was we'd attack them. So down in the Caribbean, we started attacking their ships whenever we saw them. And this became called the Quasi-War or quasi-war. Either way is fine. And um, the strange thing is we didn't actually declare war. That's why it's called a quasi-war. It means it's like a kind of war. Um, instead, we just had a couple encounters with their ships. No actual war was declared. So the French decided, oh, this is not good. We don't really want to go to the war with the United States because Adams had started making a navy, so we actually could defend ourselves now. So, um, the Federalists actually wanted to go to war. Um, they weren't big fans of the French anyway. So they wanted Adams to ask Congress for a declaration of war because he couldn't declare war himself. But Adams kept a cool head, and he sent negotiators again saying, all right, if you don't want to have these problems, we need to make a treaty. So he did. And the treaty was called the Treaty of Mort Fontaine. And I bet you can guess where they made that treaty at. So, thanks to Adams keeping a cool head, we kept out of a real war with France and just had this little quasi-war. Now, at the same time, during this little quasi-war, we had some problems at home. Um, Adams had this thing where he didn't like people talking bad about him. And he didn't want to have anyone else voted in. He wanted to stay in office. So he decided to pass some laws called the Alien and Sedition Acts. This is the worst part of his presidency by far. This is the one that when people think of Adams, they think of all the bad things. This is it. So, the Alien Sedition Acts were actually a group of acts. Um, there were at least four of them. And one of them dealt with sedition. And sedition is when you speak out against the government, but you're lying. You're not saying true things. So, what this did was it made it so you could arrest anyone that was seditious against Adams, or any other government, government officials. The problem with this is a lot of the things that they were arresting people for were actually true, and so 
this really wasn't legal. It was unconstitutional. It broke one of their rights in the First Amendment, freedom of speech. And if you wrote about them in a newspaper and it wasn't very flattering to the government, they could arrest you too, which was their First Amendment freedom of press. The other part of the Alien Sedition Acts focus on aliens. And I hopefully, hopefully think that you know what an alien is. We're not talking about some from outer space, although it could be. We're talking about people who are foreign born. That means they're born in another country. So they're not naturalized citizens. So when people moved over here from, let's say, Scotland, uh, for a little while they can't vote. And it used to be five years that they had to wait till they could vote. Well, some of these alien acts, what they did was made it so it would take 14 years for you to be able to vote. So what's the big deal? Well, during this time, a lot of the people that were coming over became small farmers. And as you know, small farmers tend to vote Democratic-Republican back then. So if you can make it so they can't become citizens for a longer period of time, that means there are less Democratic-Republicans that can vote against you. Kind of hinky that he did that, but he did. And just to go even a step above that, if there were aliens that did anything that scared the government, you know, like, oh, maybe they're doing things for the French behind our backs, they made other acts that would make it so you could just arrest them because you were worried that they were going to do something. You could deport them, send them back to their home country. So anyone who might be a political threat that was coming up the ranks, you could just get rid of them. Or maybe they're speaking highly of Jefferson and you don't want them to do that, eh, shoo them off. Now, the Democratic Republicans need to be able to respond to this. So what they decided to do was they passed the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions. Now, these were secretly authored by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. Secretly, because as being the Vice President of the United States, writing something like this could be considered treason. And as you know, the legislative branch could impeach him for that. So... They kept this secret for now, but they wrote these, and what it was was the states of Kentucky and Virginia saying, we don't have to listen to your laws. Um, they could nullify them. That means ignore them. Not just because they don't like them, but because they thought they were unconstitutional, which they kind of were. So these ideas started to catch on a little bit, but most of the states thought, well, we see where you're going with that, but eh, we're not going to follow you on this. So it didn't really take off. But it did bring up this idea that maybe you could nullify things you didn't agree with. Um, after a little bit, they do end up changing the laws, getting rid of the Sedition Act, and made people feel a little bit better. But the idea of nullification would come back later.